Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to gene therapy, using gene therapy to treat SCID, the method of gene therapy, the ethics of gene therapy, and then we'll finish with a summary. So this video is all about gene therapy. So some of the genetic diseases that happen in humans occur because of the presence of a faulty or what we call mutated version of a gene or allele. So remember that every protein in the body is coded for by a gene, and that gene has to have the correct sequence of DNA bases to code for the correct protein. Sometimes we can have mistakes in that sequence caused by a mutation. So a mutation, remember, is the change to that sequence of bases, which usually leads to a faulty version. So we get a faulty allele and therefore a faulty protein, and that can cause genetic diseases. So that means that many scientists are looking at different ways to replace that faulty allele with a healthy version of the allele, and this process is known as gene therapy. So a therapy is when we're trying to fix something or help or cure a disease. Gene therapy simply refers to the idea that we're changing a faulty gene and replacing it with the healthy gene. So we're actually changing the DNA code of the cells of that individual. So for a definition, gene therapy is a mechanism by which genetic diseases are treated or cured by masking the effect of a faulty allele by the insertion of a functional allele. So we're taking the faulty allele, we're replacing it with a healthy allele which can make the healthy working protein. One example of using gene therapy has been used to treat a disease called SCID. And we've been using viruses for gene therapy to treat this genetic disorder. It's SCID which stands for Severe Combined Immunodeficiency. This disease essentially means that an individual has a very poor immune system. That's what immunodeficiency means. And it's a very severe condition. And early on, people who had this disease had to live in these, a sterile bubble, if you like. Because if they come into contact with any pathogens in the outside world, their immune system is not able to fight them off, and they would die very, very early. So they have to be kept in this bubble which has air without any pathogens in it. So it's obviously a very poor quality of life. There are different forms of this disease, but one form of SCID can arise due to a defect in a particular gene. And this gene codes for a particular protein, which is an enzyme, and that enzyme is called adenosine deaminase, or ADA. So don't worry too much about what this enzyme does for the moment. Just be aware that the gene we're talking about here codes for ADA, and the mutation which hits ADA leads to this condition. So the problem with this mutation is that T cells, which are involved in the immune system, aren't able to proliferate, and this weakens the immune system. So a really important feature of the immune system is where we have a T cell or a T lymphocyte recognizing a particular pathogen. And to get rid of that pathogen, normally the T cell would divide or proliferate into many different T cells, which can then tackle that pathogen as one big army of cells. In this mutated version of ADA, which doesn't work anymore, this process can't happen, which means the immune system can't fight off pathogens. So the current treatment is with a bone marrow transplant or an injection of ADA. So in injections of ADA, essentially what we're doing is inserting the ADA protein as a replacement therapy, just in the same way that we would inject insulin for diabetes. Bone marrow transplants involve taking bone and taking the soft tissue within bone and replacing it with healthy bone marrow from a donor. And the bone marrow is involved in making T cells as well as other cells in the blood system like the red blood cells. So then it's able to make more healthy immune cells. But now scientists are starting to use gene therapy to treat SCID, and by the definition of gene therapy, this means they're inserting a healthy version of that allele that codes for ADA straight into the T cells. So remember, people with SCID have a mutated version of the ADA allele. So what we do is we take the healthy version, knowing what the healthy sequence is, which does work, inserting it into the nucleus of the T cell, and then of course the T cell can make ADA. So we're replacing the genetic code, and this is therefore gene therapy. So let's go through the method of gene therapy in treating this disease. The first step in using gene therapy to treat SCID is isolating the healthy ADA allele from a healthy cell tissue. So remember, we're trying to replace a faulty allele with one that actually is the correct sequence. We're not going to find this individual who has the disease because every one of their cells has a mutated version of that gene. So we take healthy tissue, so someone who does have the actual correct allele, and we simply take the allele out. So we go into the nucleus, we go through the DNA, and we find the ADA gene, and we find that it's a healthy allele. 
What we need to do then is get this into the individual who has the disease. So the first thing we do is the ADA allele is inserted into retroviruses and retroviruses replicate by copying their DNA into the host cells. So just to explain what that means, a retrovirus is a type of virus that will go into a host cell and it will enter and eventually it will enter the nucleus. And what it will do is it will put its genetic material into our own genetic material so that our own cells can make more retroviruses. They replicate, they burst out of the cell and then spread around the body. So any DNA that's found in the retrovirus will be put into the nucleus of the host cell. So the ADA allele that we found, the healthy one, will be put into this so that it will be put into our own DNA. So in order to mix them together, the patient's T cells are extracted from their blood and the T cells are mixed with the retroviruses. So remember these T cells have a faulty version of ADA in their nucleus. But the retroviruses have a healthy version of ADA carried in their structure. So these are mixed in with the T cells in specific equipment. And of course the viruses want to infect the T cells so the retroviruses inject a copy of their healthy ADA allele into the T cells nucleus. So the viruses begin to approach the T cell because many retroviruses usually infect T cells anyway and then of course they inject their material and it goes towards the nucleus. Nothing always works all of the time, so a small proportion of the T cells will successfully incorporate the ADA allele into their genome, and some of them just won't happen to. So that healthy ADA allele is now incorporated into our own DNA, and remember all of our DNA is found in every nucleus of every cell in the body. So that means that these T cells that have taken up that allele are able to produce the functional ADA enzyme. They don't have a faulty version anymore, it's been replaced with a healthy one. So when they transcribe this and translate this, they make the protein ADA, which means that our immune system can then work. So now what happens is those T cells are reintroduced back into the patient's blood and they're able to proliferate. So essentially the T cells that did take up the allele are successfully treated. We put them back in the blood and T cells will proliferate in their life anyway. So they become a massive population, which means all the T cells in the blood will be able to make ADA. However, T cells don't live forever. The T cells do not live more than about 6 to 12 months. They will die after that. So because they'll die, the T cells that the individual is making will still have the faulty allele because they're originally coming from the patient's cells. So this procedure has to be repeated at regular intervals. That pool won't last forever. There are some ethical concerns around gene therapy. It has many ethical issues that we have to consider. There are concerns about the potential impact that inserting the gene might have on the functioning of other genes. When we think about genes, we often think of them in isolation, but that's not actually the way to think about them. We often just think that one gene codes for one protein, but actually many genes code for proteins that interact with other genes. It's a very complicated interaction, and many genes control the expression of other genes. And we don't know fully if the introduction of a healthy allele might interact with other proteins, and if they're healthy proteins, they may be downregulated. So we have to be aware of all the different interactions that might happen when we carry out gene therapy. There's also a big concern that the replacement of non-functional alleles with healthy alleles could be a slippery slope towards designer babies. So obviously it's important to make sure that natural selection still happens and that babies are born naturally. If we start mixing around different alleles and altering them, then this may impact the population in the future. So designer babies could be made by replacing less desirable alleles for more desirable alleles in early stage embryos, even if it's not crucial to their survival. For example, if parents were specifically asking for a baby with blue eyes, they might introduce the blue eyes alleles and delete the brown eye alleles. Of course, if we mess around too much, this could have consequences in the future. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.